She interviewed thousands of people. She is working as the head of HR in a large US-based company. And today she's going to share quite a lot of secrets about how to pass an interview. And she'll explain what do people look for when they're asking you specific questions during an interview. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a founder of Codemify, QA bootcamp that helps people to become a software QA engineer from scratch or to improve your existing skills. But Today, we're going to interview Xenia. She's the head of HR. She will share her experience. She will share her knowledge. And she will share some of the secrets that we do not know about. This is a part of the interview that we are going to be sharing with you. And the full version is available for our students in school. Anyways, let's get into it. You guys should not forget to hit the like button below, subscribe to our channel, and enjoy this video and leave a comment with your feedback. Let's get started. Hey, Xenia, good to see you. Hello, Sergey. Great to see you, too. All righty. Well, today's the day when we're going to talk about QA interview process with a, with an HR professional and head of talent in multiple companies, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Do you want, you want to introduce yourself? Picture? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Ksenia, and I've been recruiting for tech talent for almost nine years now. Uh, and the last few years I spent as a head of talent acquisition for the group of companies within video streaming domain. Yeah, so I love bugs. In case you want to buy a pug, feel free to reach out for any advice. Those are the best animals ever. I'm just joking. Of course, you always feel free to reach out if you need advice regarding resume or quality assurance interview. Always here to help. Perfect. All right. Uh, well, let's start with the with the explanation of how does the interview process go for the QA engineers in the U.S. Yes. Uh, so typically, we do observe several stages in the interview process. Those uh, are technical and non-technical stages. I will give you very, very approximate sequence of those stages with you know brief explanation of what do they need. So once you apply, your resume appears in something we call applicant tracking system, ATS if shortly. And uh, depending on the company, but in general, the real person, a recruiter, a talent acquisition person goes through those resumes and filters candidates according to the position role requirements, right? Uh, following that step, talent acquisition person invites a candidate to do the full screen. Again, all, it all depends on this specific company and a specific recruiter, but during the full screen, it is expected that you give the recruiter a general explanation of your experience, you know, domain areas, probably your strongest skills and what type of role you are searching for. Plus, recruiter will definitely ask you about your motivation. Um, then in the next step, typically, recruiter, if recruiter thinks that your professional profile fits the job, uh, the hiring manager will be reviewing recruiter's notes and uh, your resume. And then typically what we see here, hiring manager wants to make sure, again, from their own perspective, that your professional profile fits before we spend more time on doing technical rounds of interviews. So you will be probably invited to do hiring manager full screen. Those hiring managers are quality assurance managers or software engineering managers, sometimes program directors, again, depending on the company and its scale. Uh, within this step, hiring manager will go slightly in depth into your professional experience and usually they ask questions related to your past experience how quality assurance process was set up uh how the team was engaging with other departments how what the team was interacting with you know how the team members were interacting pretty much and uh typically they might ask some behavioral questions plus motivation questions. And if this stage goes well, 
there are two different ways. Sometimes companies are doing technical assignment test task, technical task, and for quality assurance, again, depending on the role you're applying for, this might be just go and find the bug on our site and submit as the bug report, or it could be something like write a script that automates specific scenario if you are applying for automation position, right? And this step is followed by technical interview. Again, some companies prefer not to do any te uh, technical assignments. And in this technical interview, they go over your theoretical knowledge, go, they go over your professional background, most interesting projects you had, most challenging projects you had in your professional career. And then typically this all is followed by an actual offer negotiation or sometimes one more manager, let's say director or department head might do a quick call. So, but that's pretty much it. Got it. Got it. Thanks a lot. Well, let's come back to the first stage when the recruiter, initial interview with the recruiter. So when the recruiter calls the QA engineer in and asks to tell uh, tell you about themselves. So when, when we start talking about ourselves, mm -hmm. what would the, be the best beginning? Mm -hmm. Would it be fully dedicated, only dedicated experience? Um, I mean, all the, should we talk only about experience of the skills that are required or experiences that are required for this position? Or should we also talk about past experiences that are not necessarily fit into it? Okay. So my general advice would be to clarify if recruiter wants to hear anything in specific, anything specific. So you can do just this. One quick question before we go. Would you like to hear something specific about my professional experience or just a general overview? If they ask about the general overview, this quite tricky one. So do your homework, prepare for the screening call, define what the company is doing, what the product is, Imagine yourself in this role. What challenges you think you would be solving in this position? And when you talk about your, prof your professional experience, summarize everything that you think would fit this, you know, imagined role. So that's the most important thing to know. A little trick here. Typically, the first one, like first three lines of requirements are the most important requirements for the position. Typically, mm -hmm. hiring managers range requirements from the most important to the least important. So make sure you include at least the first three requirements from the job description into your self-presentation. Please don't, uh, don't talk about your personality, your hobbies, unless someone is asking you, but I doubt that someone will be asking about that. If you think that would make sense, tell about your pet projects or, you know, side projects if you have any of those, especially if you are applying for a queer animation role. Make sure you share your GitHub account so they have a couple of showcases too. Perfect. First, if we touch GitHub account, quick question on that. What matters the most in mm -hmm. a GitHub account? The link, but the link for age? or the context inside of it, the mm -hmm. public repositories that they can see? All right. So I, as a recruiter, I am using several different applications on top of GitHub. So I don't necessarily go to each repo to see what the code is. Why this site, you know, Chrome extensions help me to understand how many repos are written in Python or in other programming language. So important mm -hmm. is to highlight those repos that are in the programming language relevant to the job, of course, right? So yes. if the job is listing Python as the main skill, please make sure you have those. Also, not super important, but still, uh, the number of stars, uh, you know, when someone likes your repo, they put star. Sometimes number of stars mm -hmm. are important too. So for example, you folks are doing, you know, like group project together, you know, make sure, you know, ask your coworkers to put those stars. It's just a very simple thing that this might mm -hmm. enhance your chances to get reviewed by the company. Plus um, on GitHub, what I also love to see 
is that the person is actually active on GitHub. So there is a specific field with a lot of green, you know, um, squares that shows when you were contributing to repo. So you, your repositories might be private, but I still will be able to see how often you contribute. And I understand you love doing it. This might be a fun thing and maybe you're not you know, willing to share this publicly, I, but I still will be able to see that you love coding. So that's important too. But mainly Python, like uh, programming language you are using, stars to your repositories and uh, your activity, overall activity on GitHub. Oh, that's amazing. So really good and interesting points. Thanks a lot for sharing those. Sure. Regarding stars, you will also be able to see all the stars regardless if it's a private or a public project, right? Correct. Correct. Perfect. And uh, also, you know, this is, a, this is another small advice here. Participate in some open source projects as well. Uh, I will be able to see your works and I will be able to see what repositories you are contributing to. Mm -hmm. Some companies even expect that you, you know, uh, contribute to the community by doing this open source project. If you got this far, this means that you are enjoying this video. And if you do so, I would appreciate if that little like button below would get click from you. Let's move on. How about a technical versus personality match? Let's say if uh, you're looking for some, someone with a Python, uh, with a Python language, mm -hmm. um, that's the requirement. That's the, one of the main requirements. Uh, but the person, the person puts Python uh, on the resume. You call the person in, and the guy says, "Well, I did Python a long time ago, or it was a side project I've played with a little bit. I, don't, I can still get myself familiarized. Uh, but I'm really confident in the Node.js, and I can quickly switch to Python if needed. But you really enjoy the person's personality. You see the guy is self-learning and, and really, really confident. Uh, how would you go about it from a yes. standpoint? It is something we call opportunistic hire, and we hire for the potential the person has. So I would say in general, if we don't have an, an urgent task to solve, business doesn't have the urgent task to solve, definitely we will give a shot to that person who had this, you know, hanger to learn and being able to learn quickly. So yes, mm -hmm. in general, I remember I was doing this recruiting manager certification and um, the general advice from industry leaders was you better go with this, these, you know, high potential people that maybe match, you know, like 70% or 50% of your requirements, mm -hmm. but they are very enthusiastic. They are really motivated. They have proven history of, you know, self-improvements and Typically, yes, companies do that shot. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really good point. Okay, because I always tell people, you know, don't be afraid. Go for it. Give it a shot. Talk to people. Make sure you show them your personality and that you are willing to learn any language they require you to. So also, for example, you are seeing a job description that specifically mentions Python, right? And you don't have any production experience or you don't have any learning experience with Python. I still... I still recommend that you open Python documentation, you get a quick view, you apply, you put Python on your resume, you would better, you know, make some preparation and ask for additional data to, to be prepared for the interview while doing small projects and give it a shot. At least then after the technical review, you may, you may say, you know, guys, I have never seen Python in my life, but, you know, I learned that, you know, Right days before the interview, and look where we go here. Like you know, I I passed because I learned quickly. Yep, yep, that's amazing. That's amazing. Plus, you can learn it quickly. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. That's a really good point. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, so then, then during the. Second round, that's usually a phone call with a hiring manager, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Got it. During that call, what questions do we usually get during the second uh, second stage? Oh, yeah. So very, very common question. Why quality assurance? And 
Hmm. You better prepare for the answer. That's also quite a tricky question. Generally speaking, what hiring managers are, are, you know, happy to hear, like when you love breaking things, you know, when, uh, you know, quality is something that is your life principle, for example, Mm -hmm. that even, for example, if you are a career switcher and you did something else in the past, try uh, connecting this experience with your past experience and say, like, even in my job when I was, I don't know, like, an office manager we had this side that was very buggy and i just you know like invested my personal time into making sure the set works well it wasn't part of my job but i just wanted to make business better and like we need to get everything tested well in order to make that business better so yqa is the first question then uh, they typically ask about the uh, your attitude towards test cases you know, sometimes people say, I want to do as many ca- test cases as I can. And it's not always the right answer because we don't, you don't want yeah. to over test something, for example. So mm-hmm. make sure you mention that. Sometimes for large projects, it is important that you are not only maintaining test cases, but also you participate in test, te- in test plans and like, more comprehensive test strategies. So that is an important point. They might ask about that as well. Uh, why the company you applied for try to give like meaningful, thoughtful, subtle answer here. Uh, usually what I prefer doing, like what I, uh, recommend doing is you say, all right, so the, your company is in the business domain I had exposure to in the past, right? Well, I am very passionate about this business domain. Then I opened LinkedIn and I saw who's working currently on your quality assurance team. And I thought they are pretty good professionals. You may even point someone's name from that list on LinkedIn and say, I would I would love talk, talking to this person. I would love working to that particular person i saw their like github and i love their code for example again i'm just thinking out of one yeah so you demonstrate that you made thoughtful research on the company right and you connect your experience with the company experience and then lastly you say yes you are i think you are a great company however i'm interviewing with others too and i think i will be making my decision based on how my team interview would go actually so demonstrate your sense of interest but at the same time don't make you you know like 100 percent approachable Tell them that other companies are also interested and you will make, yeah. this, you know, your best decision after you interview with them. So that is important too. Uh, they may ask you behavioral questions like, uh, tell me about the situation when you had high priority ba- bug, but the product manager or the product owner had a different opinion and prioritized something else. What would you do here? When you answer these types of questions, try try to wrap companies' values into that. For example, with Amazon, those are like quite famous for teen print leadership principles, and one of them is customer obsession, right? And you can say, mm-hmm. I understood that if this bug goes live, you know, our customers may not be happy with that. And it's definitely not something we are trying to do, right? Great. We've heard a lot of useful information. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot a question in the comments below. I would appreciate that. Also, if you would like to give me a call directly, you can do it by following this QR code right here. And also, if you're interested in changing your career and become a QA engineer, QA automation engineer, or NSDAP, feel free to follow this link right here and check out a free trial of what do QA engineers do for manual testing. And right here, you can see what do they do for automation testing or what will you do as a QA automation engineer. You have a good one and I'll see you soon.